You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. Before we dive into this powerful episode, please remember to subscribe to our channels and give us a five-star rating on iTunes to continue hustling. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Passive Practice Profits, Brain Tap Technology, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, Cairo Pro Accounting, A-Line, and Midwest Brain Health Technology. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 263 of the Cairo Hustle Podcast. I am your co-host, Luke Millette, and here's your host, Jim Chester. So today we have the opportunity of interviewing Dr. Tim Zittle, and if you want to know how your lifestyle is your business, stay tuned. Today we have Dr. Tim Zittle coming in from Parker, Colorado, and we're coming in from the other side of the state in Grand Junction, Colorado. I just want to say uh, welcome to our show. You are episode 263. Crazy. I mean, when I got up this morning, I was like, this is a good day to be the 263rd episode of a, of a show for sure. <laughs> well, it just shows that we're, we're building uh, volume after volume and staying current in the profession. And like I said to you offline, as we protect free speech and chiropractic, we stand for protection of the sacred trust. And we just want to make sure that people understand um, your story and where you come from, because it could change one life or it could change a million lives. And we don't know what's going to happen with this episode yet. So we just want to give our best and put our best foot forward and uh, deliver the good message. So with that being said, um, your chiropractic story, man, um, you shared a little bit with us um, offline, but maybe you could jump right in and just tell us what inspired you to become a chiropractor and your chiropractic story and where you're at today. Yeah, um, that's a great question. And and I'll start off by saying uh, this is a huge opportunity and, and I'm very grateful to to be on the show. You guys are doing an incredible job um, everywhere I go. I, I Among the chiropractic profession, even outside of that, I'm hearing really, really great things about the work you're doing and, and the way that you're inspiring people to choose better uh, for their health and getting better outcomes as a result. And so I think you guys are onto something amazing. It only gets better every show. It's like a fine wine. Episode 263 is world's better eons better than um you know where you started and you already got you guys already started off amazing so i uh, appreciate the opportunity to be on here when it comes to, to chiropractic for me it was always a means to an end um i grew up in a home where both my parents were in the service profession my mom was a nurse midwife and my dad was a funeral director and so i saw what it looked like on both sides of life for people to be served you know with the arrival of, of something precious and then for people to be served with the the loss of something just equal as precious. And I saw that there was a lot of of, um, wrong strategies for for ways that people were getting taken care of in the middle. And so from a very early age, I believe I was 12 or 13 years old when I watched a movie for the first time called Patch Adams. And it was in that movie just sitting there um, to, to put it lightly that it was impressed upon me that healthcare is a huge area where people are consistently being let down and it's through no fault of their own. And it's, I wouldn't even say that it's through a fault of the doctors that are trying to serve them. A huge premise in that movie is that the educational system is what's broken. And so what we're doing is we're churning out uh, healthcare providers that through no fault of their own, um, that they're coming in at a deficit with faulty premises and faulty strategies, and it's leading to faulty outcomes. And, and people are getting let down in their most in the area of their most important asset, which is their health. And so that was impressed upon me from a very early age that that was a way to make a huge impact, to bypass people's safeguards and walls and get right to the heart of who they really are. Because when in a moment of crisis, someone's going to come to you and they're going to say, you know, you're my only resource. You're my last option. I've tried everything else. And what an incredible gift, what an incredible legacy and and, and opportunity for impact. And that was really, really, um, you know, something that appealed to me. And so I started out in physical therapy thinking that I could, you know, get that accomplished there and found out after years of doing physical therapy and getting ready to transfer into my doctorate of physical therapy program that um, I just felt like a glorified babysitter for orthopedic docs. At the time, although it's changed a lot now, people needed a referral in order to see a physical therapist. They couldn't, I mean, if your best friend 
you know, broke their arm and, and wanted to come in and see you for rehab, they couldn't do it without first going to some other doctor who's going to send them back to you with a whole bunch of red tape and instructions. And to be honest with you, there just wasn't freedom there. And so being adjusted off and on my entire life, I didn't know a lot about the science of chiropractic. I didn't even know a lot about the philosophy of chiropractic, but I knew it worked and I knew it was important because it was something that was a part of our family. And it just so happens that my childhood chiropractors were some huge pillars in the profession. Um, the daughter and son-in-law, Jim Sigafus, uh, Dr. Kevin and Dr. Selena, who I will forever be grateful for. And so they gave me a little push and said, go check out this place called Life University in the uh, heart of Georgia, you know, close to Atlanta. And I went and visited and like I said, didn't know a lot about it, but I felt like that was the, the opportunity I was looking for. It had the freedom, it had the natural alternative, it had true real life results. And that to me was, was all I needed. And so I just stepped in day one, showed up totally green, didn't know what I was doing or really a lot about it and learned more about it every day, fell more in love with it every day. So what would be some advice you'd give to someone who's trying to get more new patients and to convert them to care? I believe that the best way to build a practice is through a grassroots effort. Uh, I think that there's every gimmick in the book. And, and if you scroll through any type of social media, you're either as a, as a potential patient, you're going to get accosted by ads from chiropractors and they all carry the same theme. Come on in for a quick life fix. You know, we're going to make it super easy. It's going to be super cheap. And then you're going to have super results afterwards. Um, and, and, and then on the flip side, if you're a chiropractor, you know, you've got every guru in the books trying to offer you some weekend seminar or get rich quick scheme. And I think what people fail to take into account that that care and the ultimate uh, um, mission of care is to build relationships based on trust. I believe that the best way to market for new patients is to, to leverage and utilize the people that you already have and the people that you already know. We all have a circle, a sphere of influence. And that sphere, the people in that sphere have their own sphere of influence. And if we're able to build enough trust with those individuals through careful networking, through showing up consistent, and through consistently putting forth the message of what we stand for and the mission of what we're about, then that is going to become contagious. And the people in our circle are going to want to experience that. And when they do, the people in their circles are going to want to experience what they're experiencing. And so I've largely built, you know, a really quick growing practice here, which, you know, is my third, this is my third time building a practice. Um, you know, I did in Alabama for a couple of years as an associate and, and we, we tri almost tripled the practice, doubled it. In, in, a, in a year and a half. And then I went to Columbus, Ohio and opened up a practice from scratch there. And within 18 months, we were seeing just under 400 people a week. And now here, you know, by the time this practice was six weeks doors open, we were seeing over 200 a week and six months in, we were at that 400 mark. We just never looked back. And that was of course going into a pandemic. And so I really believe that the, the reason why we were able to do that, it wasn't because we were out at every farmer's market fair and, and opportunity, although we did that a lot. It wasn't that we were going into every business and knocking on every door, although we did that a lot. I really believe this because we created a community that aligned with our belief system. And when we did that, we then encouraged that community to go forth and make an impact themselves through sharing what they had learned and what they had experienced. And it's made a tremendous impact. I mean, we, we now regularly see you know, between 10 to 20 new patients a week. And I would say 50 to 60% of them are, are internal referrals or, or referral, second tier, third tier referrals. And I just really believe that that's the best way to build. Well, I really appreciate you sharing with us some of your cues to finding your momentum and strategy for building three practices, which I think is really cool to hear because most people that are out there trying to figure out how to build one practice. And they're like, well, I'm at 150. How do I get to the next, like the next threshold of like patient visits and how can I help more people? And I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, mentality and the capacity of the practitioner. And when you have a large capacity, what it sounds like that you do, it's, um, it's a method. You follow a method and before you know it, you get growth. And before you know it, the people that you're taking care of, you follow strategies based on what you've learned and you get that internal growth. And I do think one thing I'm going to reverse back a little bit, but you said something about 
the Facebook ads and everybody's like saying, Hey, come in and we're going to do this. And this is going to be the outcome. But I do think that, um, those marketing dollars that people are putting into chiropractic are actually good for brand awareness. So when we do penetrate a market and people can't escape a Facebook feed of people saying, Hey, come see us. Um, that's highly effective for the brand of chiropractic. So even though it might not be the strategy that we're all looking for, when people can't, ex when, when they're on their feed and they can't escape the chiropractic messaging, um, I also think that that vertical is very important for us to be omnipresent because people know that it's a solution. And then they might even just do a screenshot and share it with somebody. It might not even come from that specific ad, but they're like, dude, did you see that, you know, you can go in and get care for this type of stuff. Before it was just a yellow page ad or it was, you know, a referral source of some kind. But I think we're advancing right now with podcasts and we're advancing right now with how people do community outreach. Like you said, if it's a fair or farmer's market, you're there. And I think that that's important for people to like, you know, organize too. And they should be at every community event that they can actually, you know, go to. They should be, you know, running Facebook ads. They should be um, learning the systems and strategies for internal referrals. So I, I love what you shared um, about what you're doing and how you've uh, progressed and um, where you are today. So thank you for uh, being so open and honest with that. And I, I'd love to piggyback on that too. I don't at all want to lose the fact in that messaging that I'm putting Facebook ads down or that I think that they're ineffective because people wouldn't do it if it's not, if it's not effective. You know, I think that those are extremely effective. My, my slant on it, cause I do Facebook ads, you know, and I, and I, like you said, you know, if there's an opportunity, our goal is to put ourselves out there and to put ourselves in front of people to advance the conversation of it. Because when we become as, as mainstream of a conversation as dentists have done brushing your teeth, when the adjustment and getting your spine checked and aligned becomes as mainstream and as household of a conversation as getting your teeth brushed every single day, you know, then we're making an impact. Then we're advancing chiropractic. And I think we still have a long way to go. And Facebook ads are an incredibly effective way to do that. Here's my encouragement on that. Don't be like everyone else's Facebook ads. You've got to find a way to stand out in the sea of those Facebook ads. There's a lot of people that are, are skipping the farmer's markets, that are skipping the, the, the internal referrals and building testimonials and using those to generate more stories. And they're just saying, hey, if we just create a really quick click funnel, it's going to turn into new patients. And then they're disappointed. And then they say that that avenue didn't work for them. So one of the things that we did that worked really well for us, just a quick example of how we positioned ourselves in the same marketplace advancing the same way, but we pivoted a little bit differently is we realized that in our area, there was a lot of these come in for a quick consultation exam adjustment, come in for a quick consultation exam adjustment. Now, again, these are effective or they wouldn't be doing them. But what we realized is to, in order for us to stand out, if we said come in, even if we did it in different words for an exam consult and adjustment, it's just going to be a little bit lost in the feed there. So what can we do to set ourselves apart? And we said, let's start holding workshops about current relevant events. So instead of marketing for people to come in for a quick visit, now they're coming to learn something about mental health, about um, neurodevelopmental disabilities, about gut brain connection. And we position chiropractic, not as the ultimate resource, but as a hugely untapped resource in that conversation. And when we do that, it's created this amazing buzz of people that want to know more about these topics and chiropractic then gets equated with a lot of these other commonly known therapies and forms of treatment. And we get, we get to put ourselves as an expert on that level, which we always have been, but we position ourselves that way in the community. And we've seen some really incredible results with that. So let me ask you, were you always a marketer or did, are these skills that you learned by necessity? I think a little bit of both. I am fascinated with human psychology. I absolutely love the, the science behind why people buy and what influences people um, because I believe that everything is selling. Of course, you, there's nobody that knows that better than you guys and, and even most of the listeners here. But I believe that if we don't sell people for chiropractic, and I say that in the most holistic way, in the most natural of ways, if we don't, if we don't have a purpose that's bigger than the problem, right? And we don't get them for chiropractic, then pharma is going to get them, right? If we don't, if we don't have the ability to say that there's an option outside of, you know, an ache or a pill drug or surgery for every ache, pain and symptom, if we don't 
If we don't show them that way, then, then pharma's waiting there, just waiting to write that prescription, just waiting to write that script. And so we have to, like, it, it's not an option of do I sell or do I not sell? It's an option of how do I make this option so compelling that people are forced to consider it as the first option as opposed to a last resort. And so that has been, that's where the growth has come in. And I've been able to use, you know, different mentors um, and teams of people. Dr. Brad Glowacki has been a huge mentor and influence in my life. Um, you know, and, and, and then guys like Dr. Steve Tolius, Weightless Workshops. I mean, like these are incredible resources that have been taught me on top of that, just continuing education to learn how do I have that conversation better? And that's honestly my goal every day. How do I have that conversation better? How do I help people see their need for this more? And, and in doing so, that's where we get those results and those transformations, which is always cool. That's good stuff. And you got some good mentors there. And I think it was Barry Anderson that said, uh, if we don't sell them and close them for chiropractic, then somebody else will sell them and close them for drugs or surgery. So Absolutely. I think you're spot on with your messaging there. So what are you doing for you and your family's health? So right now, um, and, I, and I, I don't anticipate it being this way for, for too much longer, I've been so practice focused and so building a community here focused that it's just me and my dog. <laughs> so when it comes to my family, um, you know, obviously my, my family's pretty health conscious. They live on the other side of the country in Charlotte, North Carolina. So they do a lot of health practices. They use essential oils and stay consistently active and they all get adjusted by a chiropractor that we love and trust over there. For myself personally, um, in this season, what I realized is that I was sacrificing a lot of my personal health in order to build a practice to teach other people and help other people step towards health. And I very, very quickly, but at the same time, still took way too long to recognize how out of balance that was and that paradigm shift. And so what I've done in the past six months to, to shift that is I started working out at least three to four times a week. Um, and, and that's at the bare minimum. I want to stay active every morning. I get up and I have a morning routine. That's not only keeping my body active, but it's keeping my mind active. I'm constantly reading things because I believe that what you're putting in you is going to be what, you know, gets expressed from you. And so I am consistently just trying to take more steps, trying to eat better foods. I had a coach one time, um, just that I met through local networking and, and she said, you have to look at yourself through the lens of if your mind was Stephen Hawking, right? If you were Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? If you were one of these, what are considered to be great minds, how would you feed your mind? What type of information would you put in? Would you put in the Netflix and the Hulu or would you be putting in, you know, things that are going to grow that and expand your knowledge and philosophers and, and things of that nature? And if you were, you know, Michael Phelps, you know, how would you feed yourself in order to keep your body at the highest level of performance? Um, and so those are things that I try to live by, you know, how much am I sleeping? That's a huge thing I'm stepping into now. And a lot of research I'm looking into is just the power of getting a good night's sleep. I think something that's hugely overrated, very poorly executed a lot in the world of entrepreneurism, much less chiropractic. And, uh, and so I'm trying to take daily steps in those things to get better, but I'm a work in progress. I'll be honest. You've made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession on the world's number one chiropractic podcast. This episode is sponsored by Imaging Services, Cairo Health USA, Cairo Moguls, Chiropractic Rocks, True Weight Solutions, The 100 Year Lifestyle, Pure Cairo Notes, Titronics, Passive Practice Profits, Brain Tap Technology, Sherman College of Chiropractic, SCED, Cairo Pro Accounting, a-Line, and Midwest Brain Health Technology. Let's hustle. I love that you share so many different tracks of what we have to like really focus on. We have to focus on the mindset. We have to focus on self-care. We have to focus on fitness. And it's not just how, you know, we're just gonna go, you know, have a gamble at life. No, when you're strategic, and you say, this is how I'm gonna process my morning, you get a better day. Yep. And when you say, this is how I'm going to not just go into one vertical and lose myself and lose my health because I only paid attention to business growth, you yep. get the other side of the benefit, which is balance. And how many times have you heard like so many people are just business driven and they lose track of their diet 
and their exercise and their nutrition habits. And the next thing you know, they're out of balance and their business stops growing too because they don't have the personal fuel to stand up and, and to perform. And I think that that's something that the chiropractic profession really needs to hear. I think their patient base really needs to hear. I think the future chiropractors really need to hear that as well, because there's so much that's going on behind the scenes that the chiropractor sometimes has to play Superman or Superwoman, and they can't let people know they have a regular life, that they struggle sometimes eating right, that they struggle sometimes scheduling out their days and planning out how they do things. So thank you for being so open and vulnerable. Absolutely. I, I, uh, I appreciate, you know, that, uh, that affirmation, that acknowledgement, one of my greatest mentors, his name was Ronnie Doss. Um, and, and, and somebody that's actively teaching me in huge ways. He said, you know, Tim, we're all human and you can only give from what you have. And so our desire, especially in healthcare is to, to be consistently giving to the people that we're caring for. But if we have not first taking care of ourselves, we have nothing to give from, and they will experience the result of that deficit. And so, you know, there's a lot of healthcare providers out there that for the sake of serving people well and loving people well, which sounds incredibly noble, right? They make themselves martyrs for that cause, whether it be health wise, or let's be honest, like even financially healthy, how many people are out there charging far below what they're worth simply just because they, they've, you know, made themselves you know, well, we want to be convenient to everyone. We want to cater to everybody. It's about raising the value of people's health, not a race to the bottom. And so I think that as we step into places of mental health, financial health, physical health, um, spiritual health, then that allows us to give more, to be more, to do more, to love more, serve more, and everybody wins. So what are your favorite ways to stay connected to your community? I love this question. I think this might be one of my favorite ones that you've asked me. Um, I believe that staying connected in the community for me just means being present. And it means um, saying yes when it's when it's right and saying no when it's right. Um, I think that I've learned I stay more connected to my community when I'm authentic to myself, which means I have to say no to a lot of things. I think there's a lot of people out there that believe that to stay connected, you just have to be a yes person and say yes to everything. And I swim the opposite direction. It's something I'm learning to do, which means the more things I say no to, the more opportunities I have for a better yes. And so I try to be consistently present, whether it's within networking groups um, we have a policy that if anybody comes to us at any time and ever is holding an event or a drive or an outreach event, we always try and give something, whether it's a little bit that we have available or it's a lot we have available. We always try to give something to be a part of supporting them in their work. And, uh, and then what we do is we realized, especially in this season when a lot of things are shut down and they haven't reopened back up heck, we're going to be the ones driving that community. So we stay connected in our community right now by throwing our own events. Two weeks from now, we're going to have the massive bash out in our parking lot for the ladies. We do a ladies night out event and it's going to be like murder mystery themed and all this stuff. And we'll have, last time we did it in September, we had over 120 ladies in the community show up and just have a blast, do a wine tasting. You know, so so we have all these different opportunities where we said, hey, if, if the farmer's markets and the big events aren't happening, we're just going to create our own. Um, and, and, and we're going to make it so exciting and so fun uh, that the community will just come to us for these free fun events. And then we just become known as, you know, one of the people that are movers and shakers in the community. And, and that's a lot of fun to do. We do a turkey drive in Thanksgiving where our practice members raise all the side items for dishes and then we buy the turkeys. And then even better, right? It's one thing that's really cool to raise all that stuff up. But even better is we get the act of contribution because all of our practice members or, or a handful of them will volunteer to come and we hand deliver those meals to families in the community that are in need. So there's a lot of different ways that we stay connected and uh, we just get more and more connected every year, which is super fun to, to watch play out. Well, I want to just build on top of something you said, and that's um, becoming known as the chiropractor in your community. That can never be overlooked. And I think that when the chiropractor thinks about marketing, they think about personal responsibility. And like you said, you know, becoming a pillar in the community. Yeah, that's so important to let everybody know that I am the chiropractor and this is where I'm located. And by the way, we have fun and we can help you. 
And I think that being in, like you said, between your father and your mother, being the guy that's in active service, but as a chiropractor, and you said that you've really believed in the philosophy. And I think that that's something to really key in on as well is chiropractic is a very philosophically driven profession, but it's also a very service oriented profession as well. So I think in order for people to understand what you're doing is, yeah, you have to get community involvement and you have to be known as the beacon of light in the community as the chiropractor. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that leads us to the next question is the profession has been around since September 18th, 1895. Um, it's 125 years young. What do the next 20 years look like? I believe it's going to be largely determined by the, the, the community chiropractors. Uh, I believe that right now there's a lot of people that are grassroots in the community. These, these mom and pop clinics that, that look at themselves and say, Oh, we don't, you know, what, what, what does my vote matter? What does my voice matter? I think that that really it's going to be decided by chiro the chiropractors at large, what we want to become. Whereas we think right now that these governing agencies, the state boards and the schools and, um, you know, the politicians are going to dictate what chiropractic is. I believe that when chiropractors really get serious about what we as a profession want chiropractic to look like, I believe that we're going to see a shift and a change to where chiropractors become a fixture, a permanent fixture in the community. And I'm saying this because while some people are out there crying doomsday and saying all signs point to the opposite, from everything I've seen, chiropractic offices are growing more, harder and faster than they ever have before. There's, you know, there's chiropractors that are still coming out of school and opening these booming offices. And I only see more and more of a need for it. People are getting tired of the medical model. They're getting fed up with the lack of results. And so I believe that chiropractic in the next 20 years is uniquely positioned to be able to capitalize on that and be that place where people can come to you to get real change and real results. And here's the, the caveat to that is everybody that did go out of business because of the scamdemic, it's because they wanted to be out of business because they were done. They were checked out and it just gave them uh, a, a, the pink slip that they were looking for. So it's yeah. not detriment to somebody's career if they weren't doing the right things because they probably just were complacent. They weren't excited about practice anymore and it gave them an out. So anybody that did close their doors was not a fighter. And I think that the ones that survived and that are doing well, that are thriving, the new students, the people have been practicing for 20, 30 years that are still doing it and then having fun and excited about practice. Those are the ones that are supposed to survive. It's like yep. the survival of the fittest, but it's also survival of the, the hustlers and the people that That's wanted to, to stay in the game and do well. They're the ones that are staying in the game doing well. So you yeah. can't worry about the people that didn't make it. You just worry about the ones that did make it and you make a better, stronger profession as we all move together. Yeah, absolutely. So I know you touched on some of your heroes earlier. Maybe you could go a little more in depth into uh, who has inspired you to be the person that you are today. Oh, goodness. There's so many. I feel like when people look at me, they see obviously the physical manifestation of, of Tim. But when they hear me, I mean, even the things that I'm talking about right now, this is all borrowed knowledge. You know, when people hear me talk, you know, they're hearing my dad, Steve, um, you know, one, one of my my earliest and, and, and most important heroes in my life. One of the wisest people I've ever known. I just love talking to him about stuff and learning more from him every year. Um, I think John Maxwell's played a huge influence in my life, just reading his books and material. I'd love to meet him someday. Um, Tony Robbins as well. But but in terms of real life individuals that have poured into me, um, you know, I, I think uh, Ronnie Doss would have to be at the top. I just spent uh, came back from spending a weekend with him in Phoenix. And I just learn more from him every single time I'm around him about, you know, life. This guy, he's a he's a coach for some of the most successful businesses and organizations across the country. And he speaks to NASA, American Express Corporate. Um, and I get to have a personal relationship with him, which is super cool. I never want to take that for granted. Um, I would say as well, guys like Dr. Brad Glocky, incredible. Dr. Jeremy Hess, um, amazing influence for me, helped help me a lot. Um, I would say, um, you know, there, there's been guys like Dr. Eric Brower. I mean, all these chiropractors that poured into me, professors in school. Dr. Reekman was really, really pivotal in, in my journey coming to Life University and um, being able to see him speak was incredible. Um, Dr. Steve Judson. Uh, that guy, I have such an in, 
intense amount of respect for that guy. Um, love every fiber of his being and just what he's doing, continuing to hold a high standard for DE and uh, keep that going. Um, so there's so many people out there. I, I feel like I'd just be remiss to name them all, but I think some of the people that inspire me the most, my biggest heroes would be my team at the practice. Um, those ladies show up every single day and they give of themselves in ways that, you know, it, it's just indescribable to me to watch them grow and learn how to love and serve people. Well, I mean, our team's like the bad news bears, you know, we got, we got a te- we had a teacher, we had a, uh, you know, a, a boutique store owner, we had a, um, you know, a, a nutritionist. I mean, all these people, a gun store manager I mean, from different walks of life and they just love chiropractic and they brought them together. And so we have a saying around the office that just says, you know, we just love people well and serve people well. And we just so happen to be chiropractors. And I just love that because it means, you know, everybody's story is continually being written. And so we're always learning and inputting more and more. I love that. I love the fact that you showcase your team as an inspiration. And that is so key to the future of your prosperity is support those that support you and also know where you've come from. And I think that that's really cool about talking about your dad. And uh, yeah, you you do have a, uh, a, a quite the uh, assembly of influencers there. And I think a lot of them come from the AMPT uh, sector of chiropractic. So it's really cool to see how the AMPT group has helped uh, launch uh, some of these uh, young guns like yourself with uh, Pisa Forms Blazon uh, to go out there and change the world. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it was, you know, Amp did a lot for me. I was in it for six years, seven years almost, and and it gave me my start, and I'm always be grateful for that. And then I think what it did is it built a foundation that Dr. Brad and, and the Level Up crew um, have just taken to an entirely new level. I mean, it's been absolutely indescribable to see our practice grow and take off um, on, that, on that foundation first, but then, you know, we, we've hit heights that we would have never imagined um, and are educating people better and getting better stories um, just from the work that we've been able to do with level up. So really grateful for them as well. And uh, we're getting to the edge of this interview. So why don't you send us off with a uh, cool miracle story that maybe you've had in your office? Yeah. Oh man. It's, there's, there's so many, this was the hard, probably the hardest question to answer um, because we see this on an everyday basis, but I would have to say one of the coolest miracles that I've seen um, was there was a, a, a gal that came in um, and she was, she was two years old. Uh, this was at the practice I was in, in Alabama. And, uh, she was two years old, was born premature, had a stroke right after birth and developed cerebral palsy and was told, uh, by several different medical experts that she was never going to walk, uh, without her walker. She was going to go walk her to wheelchair to bed bound. I mean, all these different things that they'll tell people. And so her parents came in, they were driving a couple hours to be in the practice at the recommendation of a friend. And over the course of several months, I mean, it, it took time and it took intense dedication from them. Um, this little gal was able to increase her range of motion and her strength. She was able to walk, take steps without her walker. She was able to like even just give a full arms and hands hug with something she wasn't able to do. And so hearing her mom just through the tears talk about, you know, at her third birthday party, being able to go around the room and give everybody a full arms and hands hug. I mean, that's the stuff. I have a picture of her in my office this day. You know, that's the stuff that just like, you just never forget it. You know, it's just imprinted on your heart. And it's, it's hard, honestly, because I feel like these miracles happen around us so often that we can almost become desensitized to it. We can almost take them for granted. And so thinking of stories like that just keeps me on principle, realizing that we work in a profession where every single day we get to chart and track and see real people with real challenges, get real results and see real life change. And uh, I think that's something I'll never get tired of. Beautiful. That's so freaking awesome. It's so cool to hear um, your honest approach to being uh, in the healing art of chiropractic. So what are some websites people can go to if they want to learn more about you? Yeah, I would say I'm pretty active on social media. Um, I, uh, I, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Dr. Dr. Tim's at Dr. Tim Zittle on Instagram. And, and that's probably one of the best platforms to follow me on Facebook, uh, just Tim Zittle. And uh, I stay pretty active on those. And, and of course, you know, our, our Instagram for the office is at Tree Hive Cairo. Um, and, and you guys are more than welcome to check that out as well, simply because I just love posting fun and interesting ideas that we've had. You're welcome to scalp them, borrow them, you know, use them. If it helps reach more people, you know, I'm all about 
um, imitation and, and people borrowing and taking stuff. So feel free to, to use it as your own. So I'll tell everybody out there, create a swipe file of Tim Zittle <laughs> <laughs> and emulate somebody that's out there becoming a mover and shaker in the chiropractic profession. Um, I want to send a warm thank you to you for being our guest today. And uh, I appreciate you making time out of your busy schedule, being a doctor to have a conversation with Luke and I today on Cairo Hustle. You are episode 263. And I uh, just want to tell you that uh, we really respect you and your time. And thank you for being our guest. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you guys as well. This is a huge opportunity. I don't take it for granted. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and we will see you next time. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.